Hi there and welcome to yet another video. This video and this time I'm going to be talking about the covariance matrix. The reason why I want to talk about this is that it's actually extremely important in a field that you may not think about till the very end of this video when you're basically going to find out. Um, and no, it's not statistics. Although I'm making this because of statistics, but still. Um, so what's the covariance matrix? Well, it's a matrix for the covariance. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Um, jokes aside, um, let, let's crack on and see what this is all about. So let's uh, suppose that we have two entry points like um, X and Y, and we have the following values for X. So one, uh, 3 and negative 1. And we have the following values for y, uh, 1, 0, and negative 1. Now, the covariance matrix, covariance matrix, is this matrix here. So, um, it's going to be the covariance of x, x, the covariance of x, y, the covariance of y, x, the covariance of y, y. Now, this is because uh, this is a two by two matrix. We, um, we have two entry points, so x and y. And this is basically because uh, it's like as if we have x here, y here, x here, and y here. So if you have two entry points, you're going to need a 2 by 2 matrix to express them. Now, um, there are a few things we can notice here because we actually know a few things. First of all, we know that the covariance of n with itself, so any um, value with itself, like any entry point like x with itself or y with itself, um, well, this is just a variance, just a variance of n. Uh, therefore, the covariance of x and x, we can just write well, it's the variance of x. And the covariance of y and y, well, we can just write that it's the variance of y. Uh, the second thing we can actually think about is that um, we also know, so we know this, and we also know that well, uh, the covariance of, let's say, n and m is equal to the covariance of m and n. So, for instance, if you, the covariance is just like literally like comparing two things. So, if, if I'm comparing uh, x and y, it's going to be the same as comparing the relationship between y and x. Like, if you have two things like uh, my headset here and my mobile phone here uh, and you're comparing well what's the relationship between my headset and my mobile phone well it's the same thing as comparing the relationship between my mobile phone and my headset so yeah it's, it's, it's essentially the same thing um, so yeah the covariance of m, n and m is the same as the covariance of, um, of m and n which basically means that um, the covariance of x and y uh, is the same as the covariance of the y and x, which is good because it means that we don't have to calculate it two times. So we can also uh, um, basically rewrite this as the matrix given by the variance of x, covariance of x and y, the covariance of y and x, and we just remember in this case as those two are equal, uh, and the variance of y. 
and still our two by two matrix. So these two are equal. And in the main di diagonal, so here, um, I have the, the two variances. So the variance of X and the variance of Y. Uh, this is also uh, very interesting because whenever you throw an, <laughs> a matrix, if you throw linear algebra in some other kind of subject, I, I, I begin to love it because I do love linear algebra. Like it's my favorite subject. Ever. So um, I was also, although I'm not a particular fan of statistics, I do love linear algebra, so I was kind of happy to um, to talk about this. So let's compute it. Um, so first of all, I want to find the covariance of x and y, which is the same as the covariance of y and x. So uh, how do we do that? Well, the covariance of x and y well, um, this is actually the expected value of x and y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. So this is our uh, covariance of x and y like this. Whoops, I'm carrying the, yeah. Just like that. Okay, so uh, this one and this one, we said that they are the same and they are given by this expression here. So the expected value of x, y um, minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. So let's find it. Now, the expected value of x, well, that's pretty easy. Uh, we have those three entries, so one, three, and 91. So what we are going to do is just uh, a dummy <laughs> mean, like we're basically gonna have one plus three plus negative one divided by the number of entries. So the entries divided by the number of entry. What I mean by that is one, so this entry here, plus three, this entry here plus negative one, this entry here, everything over the number of entries, so three. So we have uh, one, three plus one is four minus one over three, four minus one is three over three, we can simplify and we get one. So the expected value of X is one. Now let's find the expected value of Y Okay, so the expected value of y, well, we're basically going to do the same, the very same thing. Now, y is uh, 1, 0, and negative 1. So we're going to have 1 plus 0 plus negative 1, all divided by 3, because we have three entries once again. So 1 plus 0 plus negative 1, all divided by 3. So we get, well, one minus one, we get zero plus zero is zero, zero over three, uh, and we know that is zero. So we got zero. Now, what do we get from um, the expected value of x, y? Well, um, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, multiply one with one and sum it to um, we're going to add it to uh, 3 times 0 and then add it to negative 1 times negative 1 and divide everything by the uh, entry, so everything divided by 3. So we get um, 1 times 1 plus 3 times 0 plus negative 1 times negative 1 everything over three. Okay, so we get one times one is one, plus three times zero is zero, plus uh, negative one times negative one is one, all divided by three, we get two over three. Okay, so the covariance of x, y is 
Well, the covariance of x, y, we can finally find it. Covariance of x, y is, well, we just take a look at the formula. So E of uh, x, y, which is two thirds, minus the expected value of x, which is one, times uh, the expected value of y, which is zero. So two thirds minus one times zero is zero. So two thirds minus zero, which is two thirds. So two over three. Now, um, we found those two values. We are halfway through because now we only have to find the variance of x and the variance of y. And then we can finally plug those two into our matrix. So let's do this. Now, uh, let's go for the variance of x. Now, if you don't really remember uh, the variance of x, what, what it is, you can go back and say, well, I don't like to write the variance of x, and I wanna write the covariance of x and x. So x with itself, okay, so if, the variance of x is the covariance of x with itself, then you can just use the very same formula. So I'm gonna say, okay, so this is equal to the expected value of x with itself minus the expected value of x times the expected value of x. But this is actually like saying uh, the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. So those two are not the very are not the same thing. They are two different things. They look similar, but they are not the same thing. And we're gonna find out why. So, um, well, let's start with. Uh, the expected value of x all squared, so with this one. Well, um, we actually know already what the expected value of x is because we calculated it here. So the expected value of x is one. Therefore, we can say, okay, fair enough. We already know it, so it's one. We're gonna square it. Well, surprise to nobody, it's still one, <laughs> okay. So um, now we're gonna go with the other one. So e, the expected value of x squared. So the expected value of x squared. Now this is different because um, we are essentially gonna take all uh, each term of this entry, square it, add it together, and then compute the uh, expected value. So we're gonna have one squared plus three squared plus negative one squared all divided by three. So we're gonna square the entries. So one squared plus three squared plus negative one squared all divided by three. So what do we get? Well, we get, uh, well, one, one square is one, uh, three square is nine, one, negative one square is one, all divided by three. So nine, nine plus one is 10, plus one is 11, so we have 11 over three. Now, so the variance of x is, well, the variance of x, now we can say that is um, e of x squared, so 11 over 3, minus e of x squared, so 1. 11 over 3 minus 1, well, easy. Uh, all, everything over 3, 11 is going to be here, we have uh, 3 here, so 11 minus 3 is 8 over 3. Now, um, we all it's left now is to find the variance of 
y. And guess what? We're going to use the very same formula once again. So let's do this. So the variance of y is the only entry that we have to find to get our matrix. So the variance of y, well, once again, is the covariance of y with itself, with one, which once again is the expected value of y, y times y, minus the expected value of y um, times the expected value of y. And once again, it's the expected value of y squared minus the expected value of y all squared. Now, this is exactly like we were doing here. Therefore, surprise to nobody, we're going to compute it. So, the expected value, let's find first the expected value of y, squ everything squared. Now, the expected value of y, everything squared, is, well, we already found the expected value of y, which is 0. If we square 0, it's still going to be 0. So, it's 0. There we go. So, it will be, well, for the sake of... Uh, saying it's the first time, let's write 0 squared, which is still 0, of course. Now, uh, we're going to have to compute e of uh, the expected value of y squared. So, the expected value of y squared, once again, as I said, we're going to take um, those three entries, square them, add them together, and then divide them by 3 because we have 3 entries. So 1 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 1 squared all divided by 3. So we have 1 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 1 squared all divided by 3. Which gives us, well, 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is still 0, and one, negative 1 squared is 1, or everything over 3. So 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2 over 3. So the variance of y is... Variance of y, well, e of um, y squared, so 0. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, e of, of y squared, so 2 terms. Minus 0. So we get 2 terms. Yeah, I wrote, uh, this one should really be, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. Okay, so I, I did the right thing, I was writing the, the wrong thing here. So yeah, um, so e of y squared minus e of y everything squared. So this one is zero, this one is two thirds, uh, it's correct. So uh, two thirds minus zero is two thirds. Now, if we remember, we can populate our matrix finally. So our matrix is the variance of x, the covariance of x and y, uh, the covariance of y and x, which is the same, and the variance of y. So let's rewrite it here. So the matrix, yeah, the matrix is uh, given by the variance of x, the covariance of x and y, the covariance of y and x, and the variance of y. So this matrix, in our case, is, 
Well, the variance of x was uh, 8 third, so 8 over 3. So 8 over 3. The covariance of x and y is the same as the covariance of y and x, which is, um, we found out it to be um, 2 thirds as well, as well as the um, variance of y. So we have 2 thirds and 2 thirds because of those two, and then the variance of y, which is uh, which, as I said, is two thirds as well, so two thirds. So in this case, our matrix is, our covariance matrix is this one. And in the main diagonal, we have the variance of x and the variance of y. Now, um, you may be wondering, why do we bother with the covariance matrix? Now, wh why do we do this at all? Like, why do we want to create these metrics? Well, from the covariance matrix, so this, uh, we can derive a transformation matrix called a whitening transformation that allows one to completely decorrelate data or, from a different point of view, to find an optimal basis for representing the data in a compact way. But it's not the only use. It's also used in PCA, Principal Component Analysis. And if you are an encoder or a broadcast engineer, just like me, you'll find it extremely useful for the Karurin Loi transform. Now, I don't really want to talk about the Karurin Loi transform in this video, but is extremely useful. Um, it was also one of the proposal in a draft in a draft um, which was submitted to the uh, committee, which was standardizing the AGVC, so age two hundred sixty five, back in the days uh, when it was an early standard, um, like it was a just a draft. Uh, it didn't get through into the final stage because it's. Um, really computationally expensive and uh, compared to other methods like the uh, DCT, the discrete cuisine transform and other uh, transforms but still uh, it's extremely, really extremely useful so way beyond what you might think well there are economists that definitely use it for um, actual uh, other things like um, in financial economics or in portfolio theory or in uh, um, mutual fund separation um, and capital license pricing models and any other kind of stuff but that's for economists and we are engineers so we don't bother with it um, so yeah I mean this is pretty much the idea behind the covariance matrix. So uh, you have the variance of the entries on the main diagonal and the covariance of uh, the two entries in the other uh, positions. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So cheers and bye.